Hello, Feisty Feeder fans! Welcome to another edition of Feisty Fridays. But today we're actually a day late because, you know, let's admit, this was a crappy week and I wound up just sleeping all day yesterday instead of doing a video. So, but anyway, I'm back and this week we're going to be talking about vegetable stock. It's soup season, so who doesn't love a great soup? But one of the things that makes Actually, the thing that makes a great soup is your soup base. And this little hack I've been doing for many, many years uh, because I don't like store-bought stocks. One of the reasons, especially with vegetable stock, is that they tend to go a little heavy on particular vegetables like, say, onion or carrot um, or put something in there that makes it really cloudy so you don't have a beautiful you know, broth or it can be too dark. Um, so I always keep a bowl or a Ziploc bag in my freezer. And as I'm chopping my vegetables every single day, I throw all of my ends and trimmings into this bowl in the freezer. And you can use anything that you have. Like you can use a little bin, anything that you have space for. Um, you know, I'm lucky I have a couple freezers, so I have plenty of space. But this is my favorite way to, uh, you know, do vegetable stock in general. And it doesn't cost you anything because you already have your vegetable trimmings. It takes about an hour to do a vegetable stock, and we'll touch base on that in a little bit um, about the different ways that you can do it. So I have my bowls of trimmings here, and let's talk really quickly about the types of vegetables that you want to use and you don't want to use in a vegetable stock. So... Ones that you do want to use, onions, carrots, celery, broccoli stems, mushroom and tomatoes, my favorite, favorite things to flavor a stock with. Tomato trimmings and mushroom stems just give it such a rounded, hearty flavor. Your herb stems you can use, parsley, any, any herb stems, like I've got, you know, these are some thyme, rosemary, um, and oregano stems, you can throw some of those in there. Uh, zucchini, yellow squash, no winter squashes because they're starchy. They'll make your, your stock cloudy and they just don't flavor it the way you want to. So let's talk about the vegetables you don't really want to use in a stock. Um, you don't want to use anything really dark. You don't want to use beets, obviously. You don't want to use any red cabbage. A little bit of asparagus is okay, but you don't, like if you've got like three bunches of asparagus stems, you're not gonna wanna throw all of that into a pot of stock because it's going to overpower that stock a lot. So you can't really use them all. You don't wanna use anything starchy like potatoes. Use pe bell peppers, but what you don't wanna do is use too much of the seeds. Um, throw the seeds out because they can also overpower and make your stock um, bitter. And uh, you don't want that because then you just wasted the whole thing because nothing worse than a bitter stock. Um, actually, a bitter chef, maybe. <laughs> so I have my trimmings here. Um, you can see that I've actually used like just the tops of the onion. Um, I've used some zucchini. Now my zucchini's obviously been washed, um, but the outside of my onions haven't. So what, what you're gonna wanna do is just do a second washing of your vegetable. You'll get most of your nutrients and flavor out of your vegetables in about an hour, as long as they're not cut too big. Like you don't wanna put just like a half an onion in there cause it's gonna take longer to like, you know, pull out that flavor out of that onion. So, um, you know, if you've got any really huge pieces of trimmings um, or you had to buy onions and carrots and celery to, to add to your stock base, you're gonna to wanna to just chop them up. Like, you know, like here's a, here's a carrot top. You don't want it any bigger than this. So with vegetable stock, because it doesn't take a long time, you're gonna to want to barely cover your veggies in water because you don't want a really watery stock. So you're not, unlike chicken where you will 
fill your entire pot with water and let that chicken stock go long and slow and get out all of that flavor. That's not what we're going to do with this. So we're going to like barely just cover it. Um, you can always strain it out and reduce it down to get pull that more flavor out of it. Um, but then it's just taking you longer and it just shouldn't have to. So as you can see, we have our veggies and water in the pot. And at this point, this is optional, but I always like to add a little bit of salt. It kind of helps bring that flavor out, just like when you're cooking anything else. So I've got about a half a cup here. Um, I can't tell you how much stock this is gonna make because it depends on how many vegetables you have. And it depends on how strong you like it. Because like I said, if you, you know, after it's done in about an hour, if it's not as flavorful as you want it, you can always reduce it down a little bit and that as you reduce it down, that flavor will get a little bit stronger. So if you have a big bowl like I did, like this pot right here um, is about half full. So I'm gonna put like about a third of a cup of salt in there. Um, you can use less and like I said, you don't need to use any at all. No big deal. It just can pull that flavor out a little bit more. So you don't want to boil your stock because that can also make your stock cra crazy. Oh my God, I was... <laughs> so we're gonna let that go for about an hour and check back with you then. So we've brought our stock up to a simmer. And one of the other things that you don't want to do, and it's very naughty, is to stir your stock. If you stir your stock, that's another thing that can make it cloudy. But you can just very gently dip your veggies back down into the liquid. Um, this also gets the salt that I threw in on top of there in there. So, so we've got about another 30 minutes to go on this. Um, so we'll check back in again. All right, so it's been just about an hour and our stock is ready to strain off. And normally I would do this into a big bowl, but I'm gonna do it into this smaller glass just to show you guys just how stunningly beautiful this is. Look how absolutely gorgeous this stock is. Nice and clear, super, super flavor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish pouring off the rest of this stock into a larger bowl. And with a larger strainer in it. So join us again next week when I'm going to show you how to make incredibly delicious, super crispy, super simple oven fried chicken tenders. And if you have any other questions at all about what vegetables you can or cannot put into your stock, please feel free to just drop it in the comments and I will answer your questions. Until then, feisty feeders.